Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry, and today we have the 2020 Governor's Humanities Awardee for Preservation of Traditional Cultural Practices. He's here to share a very unique skill that he has, Mr. Eusebio Camacho Borja, joined by his daughter, Rose Borja Fields. Eusebio, Rose, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for Thank coming you so and congratulations, Mr. Borja, on your award. How did you feel when you heard that you were getting a humanities award? I really, I really feel happy, and you know, uh, when you're doing all these, these kinds of, uh, uh, you know, writing on the book card. But first of all, you have to train the cat from the baby all the way up to your five years. Not only that, you have to build your own book art. You have to learn how to do it, what kind of materials, what are the names, and do it as it was like, you know, the original thing, Karitanguaka. Uh, and, you know, my passion is just to go out there, show the people, show the, the community, and I want to share. I want to share with the community, I want to share with, uh, you know, uh, like Indigenous Affairs Office for, you know, uh, creating all these things and we share uh, ideas and also the Humanities Council. And I, I really appreciate it because my goal is to not to, you know, uh, uh, go out there and, hey, uh, I need, you know, you pay me or something. No, I just want the, the visitor to show them that this is what are we doing in in our community our our transportation because way back if you got transportation you get to go but if you're just walking from san roque to to san antonio it's hard it takes you a couple of hours if you're walking but if you use the book art you know it takes a few hours also but you got a big big load to bring it over so if you got a, a, a you know a book art it's, it really helps and it matters also to, you know, not only for transportation, you can use it for, you know, plowing your farm and it's, it, it's a very uh, a unique thing that uh, people should remember and do these things in a way that, you know, it's to show up that this is how we are doing way, way back, you know. There's no car, no nothing. Either you walk or you got a karetanguaka. That's how it is. Now, our listeners may actually know you from uh, you and your family being in the Liberation Day parade every year with the bull card and sometimes a goat. Yeah. How did you come to learn this skill? Well, it's a very, uh, you know, just, uh, just like I say, it's very unique if you're, you're the only one, you're doing this, you get out there, get on the beach road, and people will just stop by and say, what is that? Who's that? Well, what kind of machine is that? Or what kind of, uh, you know? And it's so uh, very unique. It really touches everybody. It's, it's very unique. And I want people to be happy. I want people to, you know, you it, it, it really, it really uh, uh, makes you feel very, very part of yourself, not only yourself, your family, and the entire community. So, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, but that's my passion, is to be with the community. And how did you learn this skill? Well, I learned this from my great-grandfather. Great-grandfather? Yes, because what he did is, uh, I, I, I almost, I follow his pattern on how to make that book art, especially the wheels. The most important thing there is the wheels and to train a cow from baby all the way up. And this is every day, every day. Sometimes I miss like 
two days, but I go back then and then I stay there for two hours. I talk to my animals. I fed them good, make sure that they're fat because if they say that, you know, you, they saw the cow that yeah, very thin cow but it's very skinny. That that means I don't, I'm not taking care of my cow. So I really like animals. If you give me hundred or million animals, I'll take care. If you give me a human being, forget it because it's gonna. I'm gonna buy cigarette and help me and this and that. No, just a joke. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think that's a joke because Rose is here, and uh, Rose, you actually have a very important role also in this story. Um, what What is it you're learning from your dad? Yeah, most definitely, it, it started from obviously family and then the culture. Um, it at first I was kind of like, oh, it's you know, let dad do it, but it, it's it's just really important because it's dying. It's a lot, um, you know, longer years and years, you know, come by and it's like we're becoming more westernized. Nobody's really interested. Nobody's. It's just really important that we continue to learn and be passionate about our Micronesian culture and being from this island and sharing to people that's never been here that this is what we stand for. This is what our ancestors did. This is what our family did. This is how they, you know, this is our life before how it is now. It, it, it's great to see you take up the passion of your dad. When I asked him in the beginning, how did he feel about getting this award? He actually got tears in his eyes. Yeah. That just goes to show uh, how strongly your family feels about keeping this part of our cultural life. Um, Mr. Borja, I want to ask, yes, when you when you have a calf, do you is there a particular kind of calf or personality that you can see will make a good uh, a cow for a bull cart or is it really all about the training? Well, the thing there is, it's really, first of all, you have to train safety first. Don't trust your bull. Even though every day and you know, you have to train from baby all the way up. So every day you, you, you call her, her name or his name and then you kiss her, kiss him or pet her and say hi, I love you, talk to them. Because myself, I talk to the deer, I talk to the dog, I talk to the cow and, I, and, and the pig. So all of them, they can eat together without fighting. Because I train them not to fight because I don't have time to, you guys are fighting and you know. Uh, so I train them, if I'm there, nobody fight because they know that if they fight, I'm gonna get you out of this and no more. So, you know, it's, it's not hard to train, but the hardest thing is to train a calf all the way from three months all the way up to riding on the bull cart. So, How many years is that? Uh, it, it, it's, it's less than a year, but, but uh, you know, uh, you have to also re realize that w when the cow is one year, you can ride, but uh, you know, make sure that it's not heavy load because the cow is uh, still young. Still young, you know. Mm -hmm. But when you reach to three, four years, that's the time. But when you reach to yeah, four to five years, that's the time you put all the loads, especially if if it's a bull, put all the load. But for myself, I don't really put uh, you know if it's a uh, my female cow. I don't really uh, put load on her because she's delivering baby and, and you know, take care of her just to show time. But if it comes to my bow, I say, I'm sorry, but I'm going to put tons and tons on your back. <laughs> In the old days, you said you learned from your great grandfather. What did you see your, your grandfather using the Karetan Guaca for? You know, it's very important because my dad, my grandfather, my great grandfather was staying in San Vicente, and then uh, uh, no, the farm in, in San Vicente, and then he's staying in Chalancanova. So every day, this is a daily uh, uh, transportation that you know you get all these things to take to the farm. And then once you ride on the cow, on, on the bull cart, you don't have to say, go left or go right. The cow knew where he's going. Really? Because he goes back and forth on that road. And he remember, or she remember that this road is road going to the farm back and forth. So once you ride on the bull cart, 
that car will just go all the way through to the end where your farm is. So you don't have to steer the, you know, the rope, or you go left or go right. That car will stay by the road and move forward till it reaches the farm. And then if he reach the farm, he just stay there. So I ended up sleeping on the on the walk up because it's kind of long ways. But when I when I woke up, I was on the farm already because you know I trained that cow to go back and forth. Wow. So it, it, animals got their very special instincts that they can you know uh, do things that they're like you know we might say they're like weird, but man, their their instinct is perfect. Animals are very, uh, they got a very good instinct. So that's how that uh, transportation, it's, it, it really helps also. You know, the, after going back to the house, uh, we have to get a lot of wood to cook for the, you know, the family, get some food, coconut, anything that you can take from the farm, take it down so mom can start cooking tamales or whatever. So that's how, uh, we the old uh, my great grandfather uh, does is bring it to the farm whatever you want to bring to the farm water and everything because way back we don't have any water we don't have any light so we use our transportation but you know it's 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 not hard but I like it because it's not really uh, you know it's a matter of uh, like exercising and and. St- and it, it, it really uh, make you uh, very in a good health, mm. being in the farm and doing all these things. So that's what I'm trying to do now, with to share with the community. To I wanna train something that people can come and say, okay, I, I need your help. Okay, I'll go to your house. I'll I'll train your cow. I'll train your deer. I'll train your, your any kind of animals. You know. Let's talk a little bit about the actual bull cart because you said you also make bull cart. Yes, ma'am. What is that process like? What kind of wood do you use? Well, that uh, the bull cart right now, you know, uh, we got a, a good material here in Sinai, but uh, you know, the the best material is uh, uh, what we're we using. We, we use a dauk dauk tree, and and we use also the pine tree. Because those are the things that uh, uh, it takes a long time to be, you know, uh, uh, need to be uh, reconstructed again. So we use that. What we did, we kind of treat it. We use that like a, a water shield. So even though it's raining and we put it outside, that water will not penetrate through the wood. So first of all, anything that is wood, you put water shield first. You can, uh, you know, uh, treat treat the, the, the book card because... It's 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 not, it's pretty hard to uh, you know to renovate again and put it back together because it takes a lot of uh, labor hours and but once it's finished, man, you get to go. You're you're smiling. You're riding on the bull cart. It's 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 fun. It's really fun. About how long will a bull cart last? Well, it it depends on what kind of materials. If you're using like a, 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 for me, doubt is the best, but the thing there is heavy, mm. but it, it lasts long. But uh, some some of the parts of the uh, uh, bow cart I can use doubt like the small, uh, you know, the side of the side of the bow cart. But and also uh, I prefer using doubt and uh, pine tree. Those only those things uh, I have to use that because those are hard wood. Oh, it, it would last maybe. Uh, it depends on your side that if you do, you know you have to put it inside the garage and and all, how much you yeah, use it maybe probably. more than five seven years. Wow. Yeah. 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 But yeah. also you have to think about you know uh, uh, what what it is is. Uh, the size of the cow also, because as the cow grows older, I mean, five years, you know, it's, it's big. Yeah. So you have to, again, make another bo- uh, longer, the you know, the bow cart. Mm. So you can, because some bow cart, it's, uh, some cow are big and you have to use uh, different uh, 
heavy wood because to that balance, would, maybe? Yeah, yeah, balance make it balance oh, and everything. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Well, we're chatting today with Osebio Camacho Borja and his daughter Rose Borja Fields about uh, his uh, recent Governor's Humanities Award for Preservation of Traditional Cultural Practices. Mr. Borja has a heart for the community and we'll be back after this break to hear more of what's on his mind. Did you know that you can donate up to $5,000 to the Humanities Council through the CNMI Education Tax Credit Program? Donations from individuals and corporations qualify and can be used to offset your local wage and salary tax, BGRT, and earnings tax. Call our office at 235-4785 to see how you can support humanities programs in our community and obtain a tax credit for your donation. Sizu Usma'asi, Olomai, and thank you. Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. We're chatting today with Osebio Camacho Borja and his daughter Rose Borja Tudela. Um, Rose, you've kind of been, uh, or you've kind of volunteered to learn these um, traditions from your dad. How has the process been? Is, is he a hard teacher? <laughs> he's, he, he, he's very keen on a lot of things. He wants, he just, how do I say this? He wants us to do it right. You know, he doesn't, he wants us to do how my Nang and Tang, his parents taught him, how his grandparents taught him. He just really wants to share that and just uh, keeps going. It's not hard at all. At first it was like, oh no, I'm a female. And now I'm like, I'm proud to go out to, you know, get sakati for the cow that's going to be pulling our, our cart, you know, feeding it, hugging it. And I, I, I used to see him just kiss the cows. I mean, he still does, and, and say, shake hands, and I thought it was funny, and, and now I get it. It's just really important because it, the, the cows, our animals, are a part of our family. So not really hard. It's more of like patience and understanding really what dad is trying to teach us and really comprehending, um, you know, what he's really trying to do. So um, not hard at all if your heart's in it. Yeah. Well, one of the other projects that your family has been involved in recently was the construction of the Chamorro Thatched House or uh, Guma Higai there at Civic Center on Beach Road in Saipan. Now, uh, Rose, I understand you and your 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 generation kind of did the all the manpower work yes. and dad was uh, the supervisor, construction yeah. supervisor. Yeah. How did that come about and how did it go? It was... It was honestly an honor to do this. Our family is so happy. It was my entire family, my, my primos and primas on our Borja side, um, along with some nyaos. It was going into the jungle and finding specific wood, um, not just Tanantongan. We, we had to go in. Actually, the guys, most of the guys, and then, um, you know, the weaving of the coconut leaves and climbing to the very top and tying everything because we didn't use nails. Um, uh, till you know on certain ones, but it was it was fun. I, I loved it. We loved it. It was fun It was hard. It was hard because we were there after work 430 and we didn't end till lights were out um, 11 o'clock then um, People that were able to take the day off or or not work were the ones doing it till the next shift came in So it was no re no no rest. We were given three months to build that and we we did it by making sure it was the way it was back in the day. Now, you have a photo here of a bunch of pe your family, family members yeah. there in front of uh, the, the Guma Higai. And I think, is this a goat or a deer also? That's, in the, deer. <laughs> that's the deer. That's, so there's, that's like, the, there's like 20, 30 people here. I'm sure there were a lot that were involved. Uh, Mr. Borja, how did it feel uh, for you to, to be there and to be a part of this, especially with the younger generation participating? Thank you. Uh, well, you know, uh, it makes my heart happy. It makes my family uh, together, and you know, it's uh, it's so unique that uh, all my siblings, all my cousin, and all my relative comes in, and every night we barbecue. Every night we drink beer, we, no, I'm just joking. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not hard, but it's just a matter of, uh, you know, uh, how, how these people, uh, you know, uh, very interesting in joining and trying to 
promote ocean at the same time you know we 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 want to promote our island we want to 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 let the people know that this is our, our, the entire cinema who wants to use the facility it's it's uh it's free for me or rather make it free for the people of the cinema using this uh, that house because people nowadays they are suffering and stuff like that but for us you know we're very happy and we're, we we like to to do this kind because it's uh, I I want to f- uh, make uh, you know uh, to show the people and not only the people that our tourists and it's so unique to have all these things especially on the beach road uh, by the uh, beach and anybody can use the facility and you know you can come over and use it if you but please don't throw your trash and damage the 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 facility or uh, if, if you guys can clean it afterwards and please don't leave your 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 car in, i mean don't bring your car inside that that area because that's safety for the kids so i'm just uh, asking your uh, you know uh, thank you very much for for taking care and this is not ours this is everybody's no no you can use it so thank you very much and i uh, appreciate uh kathy so mr borja we actually met first met a few weeks ago at the award ceremony and this is the third time that i've spoken with you and every single time you have emphasized how much you want to share your knowledge and help the community. The word community is always has always come out of your mouth several <laughs> yes. times in every conversation. Yeah. What is this passion of yours? Okay, my passion about, you know, uh, I like to share with all these villages here in cinema in Saipan. I want to share, like in Tanapak, I want to share, I want a co meeting, I want to have a committee, I'm going to appoint a committee there, or representative there, to come and join so we can, uh, you know, uh, build uh, uh, a Gumahigai, uh, uh, so people can use that facility for meetings, uh, birthday, or any kind of event that comes up, You, we, we can use that. Then I, I'm going all around. Uh, I'm going to share also with the community about building this uh, uh, Gumahiga again. I'm going to go around and I'm going to form a team, a group that can support me and we can do all these things. Uh, every village should have this uh, task house and not only the villages, at the beach or at the school, especially the school. I want to share with the, the school to build uh, this uh, uh, big uh, Gumahigai, like 20, uh, 40 by 40 feet. I know it's pretty big, but it takes a long time, but I need help, I need support, I need all the things that, you know, we can share and we work together so we don't have to, you know, uh, uh, make it make it simple, don't make it hard. That's well, it. You're definitely the guy with the knowledge, so if there's anybody out there who would like to put their resources behind this vision, um, you would be the person to give them guidance on how to do it. Um, I really want to thank you both for sharing with us today, but I want to give you the opportunity for any final thoughts before we go. Um, well, first off, I just want to thank thank you guys for allowing my dad to express how he feels because I, I think he is really de- deserving. I know every every daughter feels that way about their dad, but my dad spends a lot of time... <clears throat> Sorry. Now you're getting teary-eyed. Yeah, because I, I've seen him. My dad worked at the power plant for like 24 hours, but still always made time for his animals and his, and it was, oh, yeah. he made time for us. He worked for us to make sure we had everything. So this is his passion. And if anybody out there can really, we can really come together um, so we can teach the next generation this is really important. This is about our nangs and tangs from the way, way, way back. It's remembering them. Remembering them means remembering our culture, remembering our families. And I, I love it. I love everything about Saipan. I've been gone a long time, but I'll always come home because I, 
I love it. But I'm I'm grateful for everybody out there for for noticing our family. Not that we didn't notice, but he worked really hard. And since 1995, he's been out there making sure that we do not forget. So as his children, we're always a part of it. And we'd be a part of anything that, that's a part of being Saipan. That's very, very important to us. He's He loves people. He loves animals. He loves being a strong tomorrow guy. He He's a great tata. He loves everybody. I don't... I don't know what to say, but he loves the community and he just wants our culture to be strong no matter what. You know, you, you this really seems to be your family's legacy and I know your siblings are not with us, but I really think it would be appropriate to mention them as being okay. a part of this. My my brother, Eugene Castro Borja, he actually, he just left um, due to work to uh, so he can provide financially better for his family. but. He, night and day, he worked as well. And he, his kids, um, Clayton, um, Cardi, uh, Eugene Jr., and Cleanna and Cleanna's other half, uh, his wife, Carol, my sister, and Margaret Castro Borja, along with um, my brother in law, Max Bermudez Cruz, and their children, Tyrese Cruz, and Max Jr. Cruz, and Taylor Cruz. Um, they would love to be here. My sister, she. she if I can't go, we're very supportive. Um, she will go, but she couldn't make it because of her kids. They had appointments. Um, but can I just say that this is for my grandfather, UNU, Ariola Borja, and my defunta grandmother, Nang, Rosa Camacho Borja, uh, along with all their kids, my aunties and uncles. But we also like to do this to remember our um, our uncle who has passed, but always living in our hearts, Ignacio Camacho Borja. They, they, they taught us well, all of them taught us well. Our primas, we still practice this all, you know. We're up at the farm, we talk about it, and we still, are, they're little kids, two years old, um, they're pulling cows, you know, goats, they're doing it too. They're doing it too. It, it, it's a, we're very a strong unit, our, our Tuo family is a very strong unit when it comes to the culture and um, preserving our heritage, our, you know. Mr. Borja, yes, your final thoughts. Okay, my final thoughts is I love you guys, everybody <laughs> out there, and let's keep it our culture and 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 share and let's uh, help each other, love each other, and be safe. Uh, I appreciate uh, especially the uh, Humanities Council. She, Leo, Leo, and Chairman uh, Robert Torres. staff and she Catherine Catherine <laughs> uh, for making this uh, very uh, very nice and early in the morning uh, coffee break uh, <laughs> session. So I thank you very much, Cinema. I love you guys and take care. Thank you so much, Mr. Borja. We've been chatting with Eusebio Camacho Borja. He's the recipient of the 2020 Governor's Humanities Award for Preservation of Traditional Cultural Practices. Uh, he's a master in Caretan Guaca, the uh, bull cart, and also with his daughter, Rose Borja Fields. This has been Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. This program was supported by a We the People grant awarded to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Mm -hmm.